Thank you all so much for being here. My name is Jen Seeley and I'm the coordinator of admissions recruitment and outreach at Frederick Community College. Tonight you're going to get an overview of FCC, where to start. Um, we'll go over the enrollment steps, some academic and support service opportunities that we have for our students. And then you're also gonna hear from the Assistant Director of Multicultural Student Services and followed by the Director of Disability Access Services. So please use the chat throughout the program. We have admission staff members who will be looking at that and can answer your questions as we go along. Um, and I'm going to share my screen here again and start the PowerPoint. Okay, so I first wanted to address, because we get a lot of questions about what the course formats or the modalities are gonna look like for our fall semester coming up. Um, we are going to have courses offered in four different formats, which include online, structured remote, hybrid remote, and then face-to-face -face in person classes. So online is what you're familiar with. The course is entirely online. There's no set class times. Students work at their own pace following the syllabus that's assigned from the faculty member. Then structured remote is an entirely online course as well, but it has scheduled class times where you'll meet um, via Zoom or some other virtual platform with your professor and classmates. And then hybrid remote is a mixture of virtual learning and then also on-campus instruction. So at the beginning of your class for a hybrid remote class in the syllabus, your faculty member will um, talk about what the attendance schedules are like and expectations are of the class. So when you'll have to be on campus and when you won't be on campus. And then um, in person, the course you'll meet on campus for an in-person class and you're expected to attend all sessions in person. So for the fall semester, we are offering a lot more um, of these back in-person courses. And on our website, if you look at our real-time credit schedule, you can actually search classes by traditional, which means face-to-face -face or hybrid or online or structured remote. So you can look for specific course modalities or formats that you want to take classes in. And right now, registration is open for both our fall and spring terms. Um, the spring semester has started, but we do have two late sessions still available that students can enroll in and take classes. And then our, um, fall academic semester begins on August 21st. So there's still plenty of time to apply, complete the enrollment steps and enroll in classes for the fall. All right, so um, a little bit about what we offer at FCC overall. Um, there's something for everybody, depending on what your academic and career goals will kind of depend on what's the best path for you. So FCC, we offer short-term training programs or continuing education. Um, these are six month to one year um, fast track programs um, for students full-time usually. Um, and then the goal of these is to enter the workforce or an industry right away after completing your program. So there's no academic weight or credit to these programs. So if your goal is to transfer to a four year, for example, these credits won't transfer to a four-year school with you. They're more kind of industry credentials and that sort of thing. Then we have credit, academic credit programs, um, certificates that are about 30 credits or one year for a full-time student. Those will transfer. And then we also offer most commonly what students think of our associate's degrees. There are 60 academic credits, um, two full years as a full-time student and the certificates and associate degree will transfer with you to a four-year school. Then I just wanted to touch just briefly on dual enrollment because I could see in the registrations, we have um, a handful of students who are sophomores and juniors or will be sophomores and juniors next year in high school. Um, so dual enrollment allows you to earn your high school diploma and college credits at the same time at a discounted rate. So there is a tuition cut or tuition discount for DE students. Um, you definitely wanna make sure that you're working with your high school counselor throughout this process. They know what classes you can take um, to give you that dual credit for your high school diploma and get college credit. Um, in order to enroll in DE classes, you have to have at least 
a unweighted cumulative GPA of a 2.0 or higher and be college level ready. So that just means you may have to take an ACCUPLACER to see if you place into some college level courses if you don't have SAT or ACT scores or other kind of testing exemptions. Um, so the four different kind of dual enrollment categories are here on the screen. Um, just to save some time, feel free to take a picture of this or the dual enrollment website is at the bottom. There's a lot of great information. Basically, you can take classes through your FCPS high school and get college credit. Open campus is when you would come to FCC or take an online FCC class. Um, and early college is our newest DE um, umbrella program where you can earn an associate's degree from FCC and your high school diploma at the same time. So it is a competitive program and it's something that you apply for your sophomore year. And basically you're a full-time student at FCC your junior and senior year. And you do get a discount for that program as well. Okay, so at FCC, we offer over 85 different academic programs. Um, some of our most popular majors are um, anything in our business field, healthcare, like nursing. Our STEM majors are really popular, like cybersecurity um, or computer science. And also general studies is popular um, for students, especially who aren't sure what they wanna study. It's kind of a great way for you to get your gen eds under your belt and also kind of take some electives of different areas that you may be interested in. Um, aside from our academic credit programs, I'd mentioned earlier our short-term training or continuing education. So our CEWD, Continuing Education and Workforce Development. Again, these are non-credit programs, non-academic credit programs. They're offered at the Monroe Center and there are programs in various fields such as um, some healthcare programs like dental assisting or R um, RNA, um, there's phlebotomy, there's medical billing and coding. Then our trade programs are at Monroe, electrical welding, um, drawing blank on what the third one is. I'll remember it, give me a second. And then our, um, Computer and technology programs are there as well, and our HCTI, so our Hospitality Culinary Tourism Institute. Um, so those are our CEWD programs. And the website here on our slide, you can go there on our website and look at all of our programs. And the nice thing about it is online, you can access right now curriculum pathways for each program. So this basically is a description of all of the classes you would take for your particular major. So say you want to study business management, you can go to look at that major, it will show you what classes, the sequence or the order that you need to take them, when the classes are offered in fall or spring semesters, how many credits each class is, and you'll actually use these curriculum pathways with your academic advisor when you're building and making your schedules. All right. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you're going to hear from MSS and DAS earlier on, so I want to talk about some other personalized support options at the college. Um, through our learning commons, we have a tutoring and writing center, which is free for students. If you need help in a class, you can sign up for a tutoring appointment. Um, when we go back to normal operations, it's kind of drop-in tutoring as well. Um, a writing center, you can turn in a paper for our class. Then we have a specific STEM learning center. So if you need help in any science, technology, engineering, math course, you can go through the learning center. And then the library also holds um, some different student skill workshops like test anxiety or how to prepare for tests, studying, things like that. Really great opportunities for students to take advantage of. Then our CAPS office, Career and Academic Planning Services. This is um, where advising is housed under and our career services. So academic advising, all students have an assigned academic advisor based on your major. So depending on what you wanna study, you'll have an academic advisor. In addition to, we have some targeted support offices or TSOs like MSS and DAS who you'll hear from, but they also do academic advising for their students. Um, so your academic advisor, no matter who they are, will help you pick out your classes, um, build your schedule each semester, and they kind of help you progress through your degree plan. Then there's also transfer services. So if your goal is to transfer to a four-year school, um, the CAPS office have specific advisors that look at articulation agreements with you. 
and know kind of how credits will transfer to certain schools and help you build your schedule in order to graduate from FCC and have your credits transferred to four-year schools. Um, our career services office helps you explore skills, majors, and careers for those students who are undecided. They also help students with employment through resume development and interview coaching. And then they also assist with networking for jobs and internship opportunities. FCC also offers a comprehensive program of ESL courses for those who wish to improve their English language skills. And those range from basic ESL to targeted ESL to academic ESL. And then finally on this slide, we have our honors college. This is a program that you would apply for. So um, we'll make sure that we link the honors college website for you in the chat box. So you can have the application available to you if it's something that you wanna apply for. Um, in order to graduate from the honors college, you need to take at least 12 honors credits or four classes and graduate with, with 3.25 GPA or higher. Um, as part of the honors college, it looks really great on your resume because you'll attend conferences, there's networking opportunities, you do an independent study project. So it's kind of like a practicum or a mini internship, um, which again, looks very marketable to four-year schools when you're transferring. And there are scholarship opportunities through the honors college as well. Um, I also always love to tell students to get involved. It's very easy to get involved at FCC. You can join one of our 30 plus clubs and organizations like the gaming club or the ceramics club or more academic based clubs like biology club or nursing club. Um, you can become a member of the student government association and help with student planning and programming for other students at FCC. So there's a lot of ways to get involved. We also offer athletics through our National, National Junior College Athletic Association and our men's and women's sports teams are listed here on the slide. And then there's a lot of opportunities as well to participate in leadership conferences, um, service projects, attend special events um, on campus. There are even some held virtually kind of in this pandemic era, but as we are migrating back to campus, there'll be more in-person on-campus programming available for students. Okay, how much does it cost to attend FCC? So this chart shows the annual cost for a full-time in-county student taking 30 credits per year. So again, as a full-time student, if you take 15 credits each semester, that's 30 a year if you're going for two years to get your 60 credits for your associate's degree. So this $4,702 would be the average cost for a full-time in-county student for one year to attend FCC. Um, you can see that compared to a four-year public college in state and a four-year private college. And those blue and orange numbers don't include room and board either. So if you're planning on living on campus, there would be an additional fee to that as well. So FCC is definitely a smart investment. Um, our students graduate with little or no college debt and while still maintaining a great quality education. Okay, then I get the follow-up question, well, how do I pay for school? I need some help still. Um, we have scholarship opportunities through various programs at FCC. Probably our biggest net of scholarship opportunities is through the FCC Foundation. Um, please note that the scholarship for the fall, students coming in the fall, the application deadline is June 30th. So that's coming up pretty quickly. It opened in April and it's open through the end of this month. So if you plan on attending FCC this fall and are applying for scholarships, definitely check out the FCC Foundation um, ASAP just so you can get your scholarship application in. Then there's scholarships through workforce development. If you're interested in those short-term training, continuing education, non-academic credit programs, they have a scholarship application you can fill out for that. If you're pursuing building trades, there's a specific scholarship for that. We have a STEM scholars program for students who are um, attending, new students attending FCC in a STEM major and show financial need. Um, there's some criteria, you need to have at least a 2.75 unweighted GPA and it's something that you apply for. Um, you can 
apply for that STEM scholars program. Like I said earlier, honors has scholarships. You're gonna hear from Eugene and he's gonna talk about the PASS program that has a scholarship attached to it. Um, in the admissions office, we have student ambassadors who get a scholarship each semester by doing kind of um, leadership work for the admissions office. So you attend events either virtually or in person, kind of do tours on campus. Um, you act as an ambassador to the college and there's a scholarship attached to that. We also offer payment plans. So um, they're available through our student accounts office. Um, and once you set up a payment, payment plan or you're enrolled in one, the money's automatically deducted each month and payment plans are offered for both fall and spring semesters. So you don't have to feel like you have to pay your tuition all up front. You can work with our student accounts office to get on one of these payment plans. Okay, and then finally, I wanna talk about the enrollment steps. I'm sure a lot of you have maybe even started these or you're halfway through or some need to start at square one. So I wanna just kind of go over each step quickly. The first thing that you'll do is apply to the college, frederick.edu backslash apply. Please note that dual enrollment students, you must reapply. Two reasons for that for you to declare a major and then for you to also be eligible for financial aid because you don't have either of those as a dual enrollment student. So you apply to the college, then you're gonna receive a welcome letter from the admissions office that has your student ID number, your FCC email address, and then the enrollment steps laid out for you, what you need to do next. Then you wanna start thinking about financial aid and apply for financial aid, so file your FAFSA. Um, then you will, once you get your student ID number from the admissions office, you'll reset your password so that you're able to log into your student accounts, which includes your email, PeopleSoft, which is where you register for classes, Blackboard, which is something that you'll use for your, um, your, act, your actual academic classes. And then also with your login credentials that you reset, you're going to log into our new virtual orientation, which is called Go-To Orientation. Um, we're having all students, it's strongly encouraged for you to go through this new orientation. There's different modules that goes through um, every aspect of FCC, um, different departments, the enrollment steps, things you need to know, policies and procedures. It's a really lot of great information. So we want you to start doing your virtual orientation also, all students pursuing academic credit courses must take placement testing or send testing exemptions. Our placement testing is in math, reading, and writing. So there's three of them. And this is just an assessment. It's not graded, it's not timed. It's an assessment to know what level of English and math for you to start in at FCC so that you're successful. And in this chart here and below, there's some examples of testing exemptions. We'll make sure that we put the testing center link for you in the chat so you can look up all of the exemptions. But if you have those and haven't sent them to the college yet, please email them to transfer evaluation at frederick.edu and then they'll get processed for you. Then once you do your placement testing, you're going to meet with your assigned academic advisor or your TSO advisor and all new students to college go through ROAR, which is our required orientation advising and registration. So essentially your advising appointment. You meet with your advisor, they'll go over what classes you can enroll in or you should enroll in based on your goals and they'll show you how to do that through PeopleSoft. Then you'll be enrolled, you can see your financial aid, your bill and all of those things. So that's a synopsis of the enrollment steps. Here's our contact information. If you have any questions about anything I just said, either now you can put them in the chat or down the road, feel free to contact us. You can call our office or you can email us. My email is on here, Jay Seeley, or you can email admissions at frederick.edu. So I'm pretty close to being on time. Um, okay, so let me make sure I can get it. Okay, great. So next up, we're gonna hear from Eugene Smith, who is the Assistant Director of Multicultural Student Services. Good evening, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Eugene Smith, and I just wanted to come on and provide a quick uh, overview of the Office of Multicultural Student Services, uh, as well as talk about our PASS program. We are in the midst of gearing up 
uh, for our Summer Bridge Academy. Uh, so just briefly, the Office of Multicultural Student Services, uh, we provide, as was mentioned earlier, comprehensive support services for advising, counseling, mentoring, leadership development, uh, and cross-cultural uh, experiences for students. Um, our goal is to help students transition to college successfully um, from wherever they are, whether that's high school or returning back to college. And we uh, work with students one-on-one -on -one or in group settings to make sure that they are successful. And so the PASS program is which uh, I oversee. It stands for Partnership to Achieving Student Success. There is a scholarship attached to it for those who apply to the program. Uh, in order to uh, uh, achieve the or earn the scholarship, uh, students have to complete the entire Summer Bridge Academy. Uh, and the dates are July 26th through August 13th. Uh, and our sessions are 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And the reason why we have that time frame is we're going to take students literally through the process of what it looks like to be a college student. Um, so even if you're not taking summer classes at, as of right now, you can get that uh, classroom experience before classes begin. And so we will take what you placed into your uh, placement test, whether that's college level uh, or uh, college readiness courses, um, we will take those uh, your scores and place you with a faculty member who will work with you on math, English, and writing skills. So within those three weeks, you will be prepared for your first year of, uh, uh, your first semester of college. And uh, the added benefit of this is that we're, as we're transitioning back to college, uh, back to campus, excuse me, we're still having our Summer Bridge Academy on virtual, so that even if you are thinking about uh, whether you wanna do structured remote classes or hybrid or traditional face-to-face -face classes, we're going to prepare you for whatever course uh, selection that you decide. And then what happens is that uh, in September, October, and November, I literally take the students on a journey of their academic uh, experience. And we're coaching, I'm coaching with you uh, and co-constructing uh, your experience by aligning your academic goals to your career goals and then connecting you to resources that I may not have in my office. But what we do is we connect you to all of the resources that are on campus, um, as you'll see, as was mentioned earlier. And then in the uh, spring, fall, end of the fall semester, you'll receive a $300 scholarship. And then we'll have a Winter Bridge Academy where we'll, we're going to focus on transfer and career readiness courses and workshops. And then at, in the end of the spring semester, if you've done really well, you'll receive a $500 scholarship that will be applied to uh, the next academic school year. Uh, so again, uh, PASS is open to all students. Uh, we've actually, this is our 11th year doing this. And it began as uh, looking at high school students. We've expanded that to new and incoming students. So we have students who are adult learners, who are traditional students, who are you know between the ages of 18 and 25, and then those who are above that that age. Um, and so we really encourage anyone to apply to the program. Uh, and you'll meet with me one on one uh, for an interview. And then we'll get you into the program and then we'll be working one-on-one -on -one, uh, and in group settings to make sure that your, your academic goals and your career goals align so that uh, you have a say and ownership in your college experience. Um, so I, I saw that there was a couple uh, posts in, in, in the chat of our location and information. Um, I wanna make sure you do have the application even if uh, uh, you want to just look at that information, I'll post the application in the chat as well. But thank you so much for your time. And I, I'll give you back uh, five more minutes, Jen. <laughs> Thanks, Eugene. I appreciate all the information. Um, OK, so next we're going to hear from Kate Kramer Jefferson, who is the Director of Disability Access Services. Thanks, Jen. Good evening. My name is Kate. And if you bear with me one moment, I have a really brief 
PowerPoint just to guide some talking points. Okay, hopefully everybody can see that okay. Okay, um, so I just wanted to share a few things about what the Disability Access Services Office does, um, starting with who we serve. Um, we have about 400 students that we work with each academic year. Um, this past year, don't know our exact numbers. We were a little lesser with the pandemic, but um, the year before we were about 470. Um, so we work with many different students in all types of disabilities. And this includes uh, students with learning dif disabilities, um, physical disabilities, sensory, students with psychological or mental health disabilities, um, students with attention deficit disorder, and I might be missing one in there, medical um, and more. So um, sometimes the students who may not be aware that they qualify for services um, include those with medical um, diagnoses and students with mental health diagnoses. So um, we encourage folks to talk with us if they're not sure if they may be eligible for services um, and we will help students to determine that. We work with learners of all ages. Um, so traditional age students coming right out of high school, adult learners um, and everyone in between. And we work with students who are pursuing credit courses and non-credit courses. So that can be through continuing education workforce services. It can be a student taking a non-credit class that is a course of interest. Um, so we would want anyone to come and talk with us if they feel accommodations would be helpful for them. And then with each student, we try and take, oops, I'll go back, um, a very individualistic approach. So for example, we may have two students who um, have a diagnosis of attention deficit disorder. Um, we're gonna go through a pretty thorough intake process with each student and those students may have very different supports in place or different accommodations in place. So um, we treat each student as an individual, uh, determine eligibility, which I'll talk about in just a moment, um, and then come up with um, a plan, services and supports for each student. In terms of what we do, um, both Jen and Eugene talked about academic advising. Our office is one of the targeted support offices and we serve as academic advisors to the students who use our services. Um, so that is one of the primary services that we offer. We have two disability specialists who are also academic advisors and then they can assist students with the next bullet, accommodation coordination. Um, so determining what accommodations students might be eligible for. Um, so for students who had either maybe an IEP or a 504 plan um, in high school, those students very well may be eligible for services at the college level. Services don't automatically transfer from high school to college, um, but many of those students would be eligible for college level accommodations. And for our adult students um, who have a diagnosis, diagnosed disability, we would work with them um, to put accommodations into place. So those first two bullets are really the two primary um, functions of our office. And we work to provide those services um, to students at the same time. So that when a student is meeting with an advisor in our office, we're helping them select courses, talking about educational goals, and then also working on creating what we call an FCC, a student success plan. And that's the accommodation plan. In addition to those services, we have an assistive technology lab for students who may utilize assistive technology. Um, we take a case management approach with students. So um, one of the things I would say to um, prospective students who are in attendance, you know, think about the level of support that may be helpful to you. Um, some students may choose to work with our office just for advising and accommodations maybe just once a semester. And then other students may be coming to meet with a specialist in our office on a weekly basis for someone to um, touch base and, and talk about how things are going throughout the semester. And one is not right and the other is wrong. It's really what level of support is most helpful to each student. 
Um, we have a Getting Connected Club that we are planning to offer again this fall as we're transitioning back to more on-campus offerings. Um, and really for the students who work with our office, we would say if you need um, information on a resource on campus or you're not quite sure who to go to, we want you to use our office as your point of contact. So come and talk with your advisor and we can help point you in the, the right direction. So it's never too early to start thinking about what level of support might be most helpful to students who are interested in our services. Next are post-secondary accommodations. So these are just examples. This list is not exhaustive by any means, but I picked some of the more common accommodations for um, students who've had accommodations in K through 12, uh, the first line testing accommodations of extra time and a distraction reduced testing site, those are very common accommodations in high school and those continue to be common accommodations at the college level. Some of the other things might include uh, the ability to audio record in a class or use a laptop in a class, um, being able to utilize assistive technology for students who might be using reading or writing software or dictation software. And then for students with print disabilities, um, what we would call alternate text format. Um, so being able to get textbooks in an alternate electronic format to use with that assistive technology. Um, we have a large deaf and hard of hearing population um, at FCC, and we have significant interpreting services um, for students who use sign language, and that's in both remote, um, structured remote classes and face-to-face -face classes, note takers, and then a variety of other accommodations that would be determined on a case-by-case -case basis um, as we're meeting with students. So again, those are just some examples of some common accommodations. And then how can students prepare? Um, so you've heard several times now, um, you students need to meet with their advisor if you think back to that checklist. And for students who are interested in using disability access services, you also wanna think of us as your academic advisor. So when you get to that point of making an appointment with an advisor, we want you to contact us. Um, that can be through phone or email we'll get you a request for services that we would have you complete and then you would be submitting documentation of your disability so that's the key thing um, and that will vary based upon the type of disability identified um, so for example if a student has a medical disability depending upon what that is we would need a letter from a qualified medical professional who can speak to that diagnosis um, another example might be a student who has what would be under a mental health or psychological disability, something like anxiety or depression, where that would need to come specifically from a mental health provider. So we have documentation guidelines that we would will provide to students um, so that you can make determinations about who is the best medical professional um, to get your documentation from that you would submit that to us. We review that for eligibility purposes. And then there would be an intake with a disability specialist. And we would go over what types of accommodations a student would be eligible for at the college level. Um, so that's really the first step. And any uh, at any point along the way, we would want students to reach out to us if there are questions, um, if clarification is needed. Um, we're really available to help a student from the time they contact us to say they're interested in services until they are, are starting the semester. And then we continue to work with students um, throughout the time they are at FCC. Some other things to consider um, for students, especially those who may be looking at this fall semester, um, would be to think about how one learns best. And that really comes into play with those different class modalities that we will have this fall, the face-to-face, -face, the hybrid, the online, um, and so on. So we want you to think about how you learn best um, so that we can help you in an advising session. Another one is the changing role of parents and family, especially for our um, high school age students who are completing um, and getting ready to start at FCC. 
Um, students would be the ones to decide if they want uh, parents or family involved in the process with our office, but that is totally up to students. Um, it would involve uh, completing a release, a consent to release with our office, and we realize that may change. Um, we have to hear from the student in terms of requesting services and all the other steps along the way, uh, but we want to do what students find most supportive. So if a student would like parents or family involved in the process, they can be, um, but it will definitely be different um, in terms of the role of parents or family compared to how things worked in, in K through 12. So uh, we encourage students to have conversations with their family or parents uh, before they start the process so that information can be shared about what level of support um, a student may be looking for. And then some other things to think about really that balance of personal life. Um, if you are working, are you looking at being a full-time student, a part-time student? What are the other, excuse me, <coughs> obligations that you have outside of school? Transportation, how are you going to get to campus? You know, just start thinking about those things that can be really helpful in the advising appointment. And then Jen initially mentioned all the different academic supports that we have at the college um, and the advisors, the specialists in our office will be referring students to those and helping students connect with those. And I haven't looked at the chat, but we'll take any questions. Um, but I did want to mention right now as all of us are transitioning back to campus. We are continuing to offer remote services um, through virtual appointments, and we are scheduling face-to-face -face appointments for students who would prefer that. And our office is currently open Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30 um, for some quick drop-in assistance. So you can let us know the best way that we can assist you and our contact information is there. And I will take any questions if there are any. Thanks, Kate, for all that information. I know Jane was putting in all the DAS information too in the chat for people to see. Um, so at this point, we, like Kate said, we will open it up for questions. If anyone has any questions um, for myself or for Kate, um, feel free to throw them in the chat box right now and we will answer those questions that you have. Um, okay, someone sent me a question asking, um, what do I mean by credits? Um, so credits are for each class, you get a certain number of academic credits. Um, most classes are three credits. Some classes are four credits, like if you have a science class with a lab, the instruction part is three credits plus the lab is one credit. So your whole class together is four credits. In order to get a certificate or an associate's degrees, you have to get a certain number of credits in order to fulfill those. So um, a certificate usually is about 30 credits and an associate's degree is about double that, 60 credits. So when we talk about academic credits, we're talking about kind of the weight of your class and you know how many credits you're taking per semester. So a full-time student pursuing an associate's degree we recommend you taking 12 to 15 credits a semester so that you'll be able to graduate in two years. Someone asked, how do I find who my advisor is? Great question. Um, you're going to, let me just share my screen here and I will walk you through it um, on our website so everyone can just see exactly where to go. Okay, so do you guys see my, my screen? Okay. So this is the main FCC page. I'm just going to go back to our main page. What you can do is go up here on the black toolbar and click on resources. And then you're going to scroll down to this academic support section and click on career and academic planning services. This is our CAPS office. And then um, all students can just click on the current returning incoming transfer is probably the quickest way to get to the advisor list. You click on that. And then depending on what office you're looking to make an appointment with, like how we mentioned earlier, students have an assigned academic advisor based on your majors, unless you're involved with one of our TSOs or our targeted support offices. So like 
if you're going to be participating in DA, DAS, um, Kate's office, you'd go down here and schedule with disability access services. Or if you're going to participate with multicultural student services, Eugene's department, you'd click here. But if you're not going to be um, involved with any of those TSOs, you're just going to click under caps and click schedule appointment. And then this is going to bring up the list of all of the majors. So to find out who your advisor is, you're going to click, you're going to select whatever major you're going to be studying at FCC. Um, and if you're not sure you're going to do general studies, you'll select general studies. So say you're an arts and humanities major, you just click the plus sign and it expands. Your major is going to be Jenny Moore. And then you can click the green button schedule appointment and that brings up Jenny Moore's calendar for you to schedule your advising appointment. Great question. Okay, any other questions anybody has? And if you can't think of any questions right now, um, again, feel free to reach out to us after this event. Um, I believe the admissions information was put in the chat already. You can call our office or you can email us. What I'm actually going to do is tomorrow, I'm going to send an email to all of you who signed up for this virtual event. And it's going to thank you for coming to the event again, but it's going to include all of the contact information, um, phone numbers, the email addresses, um, and the actual direct internet links for all of the departments that we've touched on today during this presentation. So if you missed one and didn't write it down from the chat, you'll get all of that information in your inbox tomorrow from an email from me. Oh yeah, and Jane just put in the chat, we are gonna start opening up um, having on-campus tours at the end of July. So you can check out the admissions webpage frederick.edu backslash admissions and look under upcoming events. We have some July tour dates on there that you can come to campus and get a modified tour. And someone asked about the recording. So the recording isn't going to be sent out to you right away because it has to be kind of edited um, by our marketing department when it's we're done recording this. But what we do in the email that I'll send you tomorrow is I'll send you a link to our admissions YouTube playlist. And this has all of our past recorded virtual events. So this event, this recording will eventually be on that link as well. So I would just give it a week and a half to two weeks just to give me enough time. Um, but then this recording will be posted on that admissions YouTube playlist. And I'll make sure that that link is in the email I send you tomorrow. All right, anybody have any other last minute questions for tonight? All right, well, that concludes our virtual information session. I want to thank um, Kate for being here and talking about DAS and Eugene, who was talking about MSS. Um, thank you all so much for being here. I hope you got some great information. And if you have any follow up questions, again, please reach out to us by phone or email. We are here to help you. And again, keep a lookout tomorrow from your inbox from an email that has all of the information we covered today so that you have easy access to it um, as well for you. So thanks again. I wish you all the best and please reach out if you have any questions. Um, everyone have a great evening. Thank you.